Good morning guys from Tucson. I'm at Arizona Transmission and Engine Exchange. That's a tongue twister. Today we're gonna see a teardown of the new MT643 with Christian and Richard. Uh, and I don't wanna sound the alarm. Nobody needs to replace their AT545 unless you have an issue with it. So I'm only doing this because there's an issue with my transmission. There's a lot of brass in the pan and that is no good. Uh, here is a transmission I got. This is a used MT643 and uh, I have no idea what the condition inside of it is and uh, that's why these guys are here to uh, tear it apart. So, let it rip. <laughs> Converter. That's a torque converter. You want to take it apart? Okay. See how it looks inside. First, the demonstration is when we slide the torque converter on, it's a slide on and off torque converter. We slide this off for inspections as we go through the model. So, the, the main important we're going to look at is here is this hub right here. So, this hub is worn down and will need replaced. In the bushing area, if you feel the, the diameter is worn out, it's dipped down. Yep, yeah, I can feel that. So Very that is, slightly. But that is beyond specs, so it will have to be replaced, this hub. Okay, and, and, how, and so what, if I was driving this and I had an issue and this was the problem, what would that be called? Uh, it would be a front end leak, which would start to leak out the front end, and this rides on the pump bushing area. Interesting, okay. So this splines into your oil pump. This is your pump bushing area, which gets worn out under just high mileage transmission wear. Okay. Would that be a slipping part of, of something, or is that further inside? That's further in. Okay. Clutches are further in. Okay, perfect. That's one point there. Right here, we're opening the torque converter for inspection of components, lock-up clutch, disc, And this oil looks pretty dark, right? Is that correct? The oil is burnt. Burnt? Yes. <laughs> okay. It is dark and burnt, which means it's going to have clutch material, probably bad. And so, is there any way to know without taking one apart if one is good or bad? I mean, if someone had one that was messed up and they just uh, uh, did a fresh uh, oil change, would you be able to tell that without driving it that it was in bad shape on the inside? No. Interesting. What he's opening up here is the lock-up clutch. This is your lock-up clutch which is worn out. It is. You can tell right here. Oh yes, yeah there is some side. damage right there. Yep. Yep. Chunks coming off. Yep. Hardly no material left. This is. And would this be meta metallic uh, material that would yes. stick to the uh, the magnet? Yes. Okay. And metallic. If you look look at the oil, the metallic condition oh, yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is all friction material coming off there. Okay. And as we go through the hard parts, which is the backing plate, lockup piston, which the lockup piston looks like it's cracked, which will need replaced. If you see this line right here, oh, yes. they clap, they crack through there, and then they bleed off pressure. Oh yeah, I see yeah, that. See yeah, I see that. Yes. And that's your lockup piston. Okay. For the lockup torque converter. All the way around, all the way, all the way here. Well. Okay. So that whole part's going to be. So uh, that piston will get replaced also. Okay. Because it bleeds pressure through there. Now your clutch is not applying correctly. That's what will burn up a clutch. all the material that is coming out of that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. It looked like my uh, shake this morning. Shit. <laughs> now the oil pump and the forward housing is going to come out all together as one assembly. We're going to set it to the side for inspection. Forward housing assembly, all complete. We will disassemble 
disassembly at a later point in time, mm -hmm. we're going to open the oil pump. Okay. So we'll remove all the pump bolts and open it up for inspection. All this black right here is clutch material. Alright. So definitely some wear and tear in this one. Yes. Alright. What are we looking at? Okay, so when we open the oil pump, we're inspecting the pump for excessive wear on the housing. This is a front support. Looks very good condition. We will pull the gears out of here and set them aside. And inspect down in here and look for edges on the side right here. Now looking at it, it looks very good condition. Good. The oil pump it is very good condition. There's no sharp lips, no excessive wear, metal gone from anything. So okay, so that's oil a good thing, pump, right? It is good. Yeah. Good okay. Condition. That's probably an expensive part too. Yes, right? it is. <laughs> good. Every time you say, "Oh, that's going to be need to re uh, be replaced," I hear a cha ching in my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to check here the seal ring areas on the forward clutch housing. Down here is the steel ring areas and the bearing area here to see if it's got any damage. Looks very well. The input shaft got a little bit of wear just from bushing, but it's not damaged. Awesome. So we will disassembly of the forward clutches for inspection of the forward clutches that get replaced anyhow. But we're checking all major hard parts. What we're checking here is we're going to be replacing all the clutches so they get replaced anyhow. But you can see that the darkness of the steels are discolored, mm -hmm. that they were burning. Okay. And that would be the uh, burning smell yes. uh, when, you're, when you're operating it? Yes. Okay. And some of these look smooth. Why, what, are, what, are, they smooth are they totally smooth because they're worn down? Yes. Yes. Okay. When they get smooth, they're supposed to have high ridges. When they get worn down, then they'll be almost flush. Flat, like that one, huh? Yeah. But this is the metal. Oh, that's a steel. steel. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, is, this is your friction, which is, people consider it a clutch, but it's the friction. Okay. Forward and forward clutch use the same diameter and same style friction. That's what we go for. Awesome. Here we go. And just for reference, this is my current AT545, and this is the larger 643. Slightly, slightly larger internals, as you can see. Inside here, uh -huh. there's a lot of metal from the clutch wear material. Down in here, all the clutch material. Oh, wow. Built up. This is all your friction material that is built up in the housing. So that's an indication of wear? Yes. Okay. Yeah. High mileage, just normal wear and tear on the transmission under normal circumstances. If your linkage, shifter linkage gets out of adjustment, which is very important because if it gets out of adjustment, wearing down, it will burn your clutches up very fast because it's not in the detent all the way. Gotcha. We're done with this assembly of that. Okay. The piston will come out later for inspection and rebuild, but we'll continue on with our disassembly. Okay. Okay, so we're forwarding on to taking out the forward fourth clutch housing, and this is third clutch snap ring. So we'll set that aside. We're going to go in here, grab fourth clutch housing, slide it out slowly because it's very sharp objects. One of the important things we're going to look at is the main housing here. The main housing looks very good condition. Good. Otherwise it would chatter and wear between there. And what happens is third clutch will not slide smoothly and grab and slip and cause more damage and clutch failure. Another thing here is another seal ring area. Very good condition. So this fourth clutch housing looks good so far. We're going to be removing the frictions out of it internally there. Disassembling fort clutch, fort clutch backing plate, the steels, frictions. Same with these, 
These are not completely burnt, but do have high mileage wear and tear on them. This one here, you can see it's cooked. I mean cooked, it's just starting to flake apart. Mm-hmm. That one's gone, see? Oh yeah, Nothing that one's totally left. smooth. It's like a... Uh... See, and that's what a lot of times, you could look at all these, and it all oh, looks good. You flip them over, they're coming apart or yeah. gone. It looks like sandpaper now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which all these get replaced on rebuilt anyhow. Screen, third clutch, frictions and steel. They are burnt down metal to metal. Wow. Nothing left of the friction. So can you reuse the steel? No. Uh, with, no. So the whole, all, all of them need to get replaced. Yes. Even the backing plate. Wow. The backing plate is the thick component. Uh -huh. If you that look at this side, it's smooth. If you look at this side, it wear is out. completely worn out oh, you can. like a clutch disc. You, you know what it looks like? It looks like uh, disc brakes. You, yes. you can see the, uh, the grooves. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. That's how exactly it does. But look at that clutch. That third clutch, completely gone. This transmission was slipping. You know, so a third gear was slipping? Yeah. Uh -huh. of you're having clutch or metal damage internally when you take out the speedometer sensor and it has tons of metal on it. Wow. So if, if someone... Uh, so if it, someone was replacing their speedometer sensor and seeing all this metal internally, then they have wear and tear going on. They need to get the transmission repaired before they end up stranded somewhere in the middle of nowhere if they're travelers. So would it be advisable to, if you were inspecting a new vehicle or sorry, a used vehicle or a used transmission, if you pop this thing off and it's dirty, is that a good indication without stripping this thing down yes. that it's screwed? Yes. Okay, good to know. We're taking the dust cover off and then we're going to pop the output seal off. At this point in time it just makes it easier to remove the seal. Mm -hmm. Inside there is your output, the output shaft, output bearing internally. So far, it looks everything looks good. We are removing the governor cover. We're going to be pulling the governor out. And that's the thing that regulates the RPMs. This is what makes your transmission upshift. If a person has a problem with an AT545 or an MT643 that quits upshifting or starts to upshift late and problems. This could be one of your main problems here. The gear gets worn out. The uh, surface here gets worn out. Sometimes when there's tons of metal going on, then inside the bore gets worn out. And this is governor pressure. As the weights move back and forth, makes the valve body shift, makes your transmission upshift. If the gear strips out completely, it will not upshift anymore. So we pulled the rear cover off. This is your output housing. This is your first clutch piston. And you just mainly inspect it, make sure there's no major damage going on. Sometimes the retainer will crack in half. This will come apart, the springs will fly in there, and then you'll get metal throughout the whole back end, which would be another major failure of the transmission. Okay, right here we're gonna just slide the, the spacer. This is your speedometer gear with electronic, and your governor gear right here, they just come off the output shaft. We're going to just take those off, set them aside, then we'll be pulling the planetary section out with the first clutch. Right here is your first clutch assembly. So we're going to look at these. You can see the steel is dark, which means the clutches were slipping also. Dark means uh, 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 te uh, high, high heat, high temperature. Yep. High temperature. Yep. Yes. These are all com frictions that get replaced on rebuild any house with just a demonstration of the clutch, first clutch. Mm -hmm. So there's some definitely some whatever vehicle it came off of. There's some intense heat in first gear. Well, the whole transmission is showing high mileage wear and tear, so it's it's not something specific that just burnt up, a specific clutch, the whole transmission has high mileage wear and tear on it. Okay, so the housing has 
some wear on the back area. So we're pulling the backing plate out. It gets stuck in there because it just wear and tear. Mm -hmm. This is your first clutch backing plate. Still reusable, it's not worn down, so it's a good. Now we're pulling out the planetary section of the transmission. On this assembly, the main components that we will be looking at for damage, hard part damage, is the spline area here, which is starting to show a little bit of wear and tear, but still okay. Thrust washer is good. Planetary gears are still good. If you look down in here, Everything still looks good there, the planetary gears and thrust washers internally. This is your front planetary. Another important area here, this is the main shaft bushing area. Even though it shows a little bit of wear, the main shaft is still good condition to reuse. It will be polished up here. If it was worn down beyond specs, then it would get replaced. See, if you see the darkness that's starting to go on, mm -hmm. this is just because the high mileage uh, a person doesn't replace their fluid when it should be. Mm -hmm. So the so fluid gets very dark. Stains and, it. And stains it, yes. Yeah. It goes through the whole transmission. Interesting. That's your center planetary. Gets inspected for thrust washer play. If any thrust washers are missing, then they get this planetary gets replaced. Old times, the planetary would get rebuilt, but due to cost nowadays, it just gets replaced as an assembly. This other area here is bushing area for the bottom main shaft. It's good condition. And then one more area right here where the pilot bearing goes. That is good condition. The gear is good. This assembly is good. Your output or your planetary housing here that gets all your planetaries assembled. Everything looks good condition. The splines are good. They're not worn out internally. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they get worn like that. All this section and we check right here. Are the thrust washers any missing? Both thrust washers are there. If the gear slides up and down excessively that means your thrust washer is gone either on the top or the bottom. But this is still good condition. Now we're going to pull out the sun shaft, which the main shaft goes through for inspection on other bushing areas. Thrust washer, center sun gear. Right here is bushing right areas. And these are the inside bushings for the sun shaft, which go on the main shaft. Everything looks in very good condition. Now to complete the disassembly, we're going to have to take the valve body off. So we've got to remove the oil pan to remove the complete valve body to get to the center support bolt and finish disassembly of the transmission, MT643. So here we are, we removed the oil pan for further inspection. We know we have lots of clutch wear already. If you're going to do a normal filter oil change on it, if you remove your pan and you see this black material, that's your clutches worn out and the transmission is, will be failing soon. Sooner than later. <laughs> so we're here to the valve body and we're going to be pulling the whole valve body section off so we can get to the center support bolt and finish this assembly. Of the valve body. This is your whole valve body section here. This is your channel plate. And as you can see, all the black material, which is clutch material, just transmission high mileage and it's worn out. Mm -hmm. Ready for a rebuild. All right.
So is this thing fully disassembled then? No. Okay. We're One more take thing. Out the center support bolt, which is here. Sometimes the center support bolt will snap, break, because of just normal wear and tear or driver abuse, depending on if they're going from reverse to dry without stopping the vehicle. The vehicles are very heavy, so when it impacts it, it moves the center support and abruptly breaks the bolt. If it breaks the bolt, then the center support is not held to the main housing firmly and the pressures bleed off internally and will burn your fourth and forward clutches up you know, immediately. It won't last long at all. See, that one was broken. If it was broke, it would have been snapped in half. Oh, okay. So that one came out just fine. Yeah. Cool. I'm surprised the center support didn't fall. <laughs> yeah, it's going to drop down. <laughs> some lightning outside, we got some thunder going on. Off to the side. Now this is your center support section. These are your center support pistons. Remove it out. All the seals get replaced. Another thing to look for on your center support pistons is the tops, these pins break and doesn't hold the retainer down anymore and just, so this would have to get replaced, but this one is in good condition. This is washed up. Another area here is a seal ring area, right here where your seal rings go. This is where your fourth clutch housing goes onto here and it gets applied through these pressure ports here. So, we got one more clutch to take out. Second clutch. Complete disassembly. Of an MT643 Allison transmission. The greatest transmission in the world. You like it? Yes. I have made a great career out of this. Since 1994, I got the opportunity to go to work at Williams Detroit Diesel in Phoenix, Arizona. Training. First started out mopping the floors, tearing transmissions apart, and I got to see the first transmissions being designed at Allison in Indianapolis. Uh, they sent me to school there, and a great career in Allison transmission. Awesome. If anybody wants to do it. Cool. There's your second clip. So let's see how wonderful that one looks. It's like looks like grip tape on a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> totally smooth, huh? Yeah. About to cut off all the teeth, almost. Yeah. Wow. And there we are, complete disassembly, MT643. All right. A anything now, else? Inside the main case, we're gonna go look. We're gonna look through it here. A couple major important areas to look through in the main case. Snap ring areas right here and then down in here where the clutches ride there's very little bit of wear you can see on the edge here. Mm -hmm. Down in there where first clutch is uh, many times the snap ring the housing will break right here and then the snap ring will pop out. But everything even though the transmission shows high mileage wear and tear on all the clutches, the main housing is in very good condition internally. And you just see all the clutch material laying in mm -hmm. there. And what are these scuff marks right here? Right here is machining from the factory. Oh, okay. When they mold the case, they have to machine this out mm -hmm. and get the burrs off mm -hmm. for the components to go in. Okay. Interesting. So we're, we're looking good. Yes. Awesome. Case good. Okay, so uh, what, uh, now having taken this thing apart, what are you going to order? What's the diagnosis on this thing? So this is typically like every transmission that we rebuild, gets all the clutches replaced. Um, 
if the steels are bad, if they're good, we can reuse steels if they're in great condition. If they're bad, we replace them. So it's going to get a complete seal and gasket kit, another lockup friction, a lockup piston, and every single clutch and steel inside this transmission and filter kit. All right. You look cool. brand new. <laughs> cool. So if anybody's in the uh, Tucson, Phoenix, Arizona area, what, how do they get in touch with you for a rebuild? Well, we're located at Arizona Transmission and Engine Exchange, and our phone number is 520-295-1392. We have very, very competitive pricing, and we guarantee our transmission is 100% warranty. Awesome. So, For two years, right? Yes, two-year warranty. On our automotive, we do automotive also. So okay. Automotive and Allison. Awesome. Unlimited mileage. Unlimited mileage. And then how many... How long will uh, I mean, I, we're going to come back for the rebuild part? Will will that take a day, two days? On a typical build, replacing all the bushings, clutches, pistons, seals, about a day and a half, two days tops, uh, just depending on uh, the washing of the components. Okay, awesome. There we go. All right, guys, we're going to check back in with Richard next week. Uh, and Christian. And Christian. Thank you so much, guys, for explaining what most people don't get to see when they drop off their transmission uh, and, uh, you know, what goes on in the uh, inner workings of this thing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we are with the going to be the overhaul kit for the MT643 Allison transmission. All brand new, genuine Allison components. You've got the seal and gasket kit here with all your necessary components seals gaskets output shaft seals pump seals torque converter torque converter shims your stator springs here and all like i said genuine allison parts here for a complete mt643 rebuild and so right here is your port and forward clutches Wow, that's a big and difference. this is a big difference if you look at the ones that we took out of the transmission oh, yeah. compared to the brand new. I mean, even the color alone is yeah. is just completely different. The teeth are, uh, look a lot newer and there's, there's no smooth parts. Yeah, even I've seen transmissions come in that the linkage might have got out of adjustment and burned up a specific clutch. We've disassembled them before, and the clutches looked fairly, fairly good condition to as new, which that's how they should be under you know normal fluid interval changes and so forth. There's the other clutch pack, completely new. As you can see again, the design, color, the internal teeth, great condition. Here's second and third clutch. Brand new. Ready for rebuild. <laughs> so these are the components we do on our transmissions. And that's why we give two year warranties, unlimited mileage. All right, awesome. And these are some of the parts that we will uh, these are, watch. These are the, yes, these are the parts that we'll be assembling when we rebuild the transmission next week yes all right cool well i'll see you then see you then all right Thank you.